Okay, so we have talked about glide of the dislocations. Glide is uh, basically when the motion is in the same plane. Now we asked a question about how the dislocations would move if there is a obstacle. So to begin with, we will look at uh, the obstacles present in the path of a screw dislocations. For them, this out of plane motion is relatively easier and it is also a form of glide. So first we will look at how the screw dislocations will move when there is an obstacle and how they will move out of plane. So we know that uh, for a screw dislocation, the Berger's vector and uh, the line vectors are in the same direction or parallel or anti-parallel. So the Berger's vector is parallel or anti-parallel to line vector, which implies that there is no unique plane defined by the B cross U as is in the case of edge dislocations. Which means that there is uh, theoretically speaking, large number of possibilities for the planes on which the screw dislocation can glide. However, there are other constraints as we have already discussed, there are other constraints. For example, we have said that there is a slip system. So first, let me say that. Uh, so theoretically, infinite number of planes are available. But then we have also said that uh, there are constraints and what we mean by constraints is that every material system has a slip system. So constraints defined by slip system. So cross slip uh, is what is the main name of the mechanism where the dislocation can move from one plane to another. So even though there are constraints for the slip system, but there are always more than one. There are always more than one plane available for screw device location. And the mechanism by which it uh, moves out of the plane is called cross slip. So what is this cross slip? Put it uh, in simple words. Let me say there is a plane on which a dislocation exists. So let's say this is the screw dislocation that is there. given the symbol of a screw dislocation. Now it is moving, let's say in this direction and it is able to move. Let's say there is uh, some hindrance further in its path. So let's say there is an obstacle over here, which it cannot circumvent. However, what it can do is that it has more than one slip planes available so let's say this is the other slip plane available to it. So at some point when the dislocation reaches this place and it forces which do not allow it to move in this direction, but there is a component of force which can allow it to move in this direction, then it will start to move along this plane. And Eventually, let's say the original direction has larger component and therefore once it has passed on or moved away from the dislocation, then this screw dislocation can come back to this plane. 
So this is this particular case is the example of double cross slip. So first, this uh, this was the first cross slip, and then it is the second cross slip. We are not saying that it is always the that slip has to cross slip has to take place in pairs. We are, this is just an example, and just moving from one glide plane to another plane is the mecha, is what is called as is what is termed as cross slip of the dislocations, and the dislocations this uh, screw dislocations are thus able to move out of the plane. So you can see this was the plane one. So let's say this is, let's call this plane one. This was plane two. And then it is uh, another plane, which is also parallel to plane one. So it moved, moved away from plane one to plane two. And this is what is called as cross slip. And then again from plane two back to plane one, although in a parallel one, not in the original one. So this is again another cross slip. And this is shown schematically in here also. So this is the screw dislocation and it is moving along this direction. So because there is a hindrance, any precipitate or some other resistance, maybe other dislocations are present there. There is something called as dislocation locks because of which there are a lot of dislocations present there and therefore it is not able to circumvent that. So it will move on to another plane. And if the original stresses direction uh, stresses in the original direction is still high enough, then once it is away from the influence of that obstacle, it can come back to the original slip plane. So this is the overall mechanism of cross slip. And now let's look at what are the possibilities for this plane uh, one and two. So for example, if you remember, we talked about FCC and we said, we are given a Verger's vector A by 2, 1, 1, 0, which was done in our previous lecture. So here we had given that it actually it was 1, 0, bar 1. And for this, the possible slip planes came out to 1, 1, 1 and 1, bar 1, 1. So we can come back here and say that if, for example, in this particular case, it is 1, bar 1, 0, then the planes are the possible planes are one 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 and one 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 bar. So these are the two possible planes. So perhaps this is one 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 and this is one 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 bar. And since there are only two possibilities, so when it moves back to another one, this has to be one one one. However, in case of BCC you would see that there is a lot more possibilities, more than two possible planes are available. And in that case, uh, the screw dislocations are able to move into a variety of planes. And it leads to a movement which is called pencil glide, meaning it is the screw dislocation is able to, the, when you look at the trace from the side view, it would look like it is, a, it is free and it, it is drawn by a pencil. So it is as smooth as a pencil and uh, then from where comes the name pencil glide. Now that we have looked at uh, the uh, cross slip for screw dislocations, next comes the question of what is called as uh, what will be, what will happen to mixed dislocations. So we know that cross slip cannot take place for edge dislocation. So clearly, cross slip, we have mentioned this, that is not possible. But the question is, what about mixed dislocations? Will the screw character dominate or would the edge character dominate?
So let's look over here. Remember that a mixed dislocation has both edge and screw character. And that is why this becomes, this question becomes so interesting. So is it yes, no, or maybe? And the answer is all of it. It is yes, it is no, and it is, we can say complicated. Let's see why. So, Let's look at uh, mixed dislocation, meaning let's look at uh, screw dislocation line, which is curved in nature, which means it has mixed dislocation character. So let's draw a line, a plane here. So let's say this is a plane on which uh, dislocation is lying. So let's say this is the dislocation and uh, for this particular case, we would say that the Berger's vector is like this, parallel to this line. So at this particular point, it has screw character. And somewhere over here, it may have a edge character, over here also it may have edge character and rest of it is mixed dislocation. Now what happens if we bring this line just near this line, uh, near the edge. So let's say this is the edge from where the dislocation would have liked to move. And we'll explain why we have chosen this line, which is parallel to Berger's vector. So let's say now let's bring this dislocation all the way. So it moved, moved and all the way it is now over here. So this is where the screw character is. But now we know that screw dislocations can cross slip. So let's say there is a possible plane, which is like this. So screw dislocation component, which is pure screw, which will be a very infinitesimally small component of it, is able to move into the other plane. However, the rest of the component cannot move on to this one because it will have edge dislocation and edge dislocation has to be confined to its original plane. Therefore, this will remain a cross, this will remain a just a pure screw dislocation, which has moved to this new plane. So this is plane one, plane two. But there is something else that can happen. And what is that? It is that this new dislocation that has come here, it can actually elongate, meaning the screw dislocation can move. And at the same time, the edge character can keep on getting generated. And therefore, the new dislocation would look, so I will now use a different one. So at some point it would look like. So here what happened is that only the screw dislocation moved and rest of the dislocation character were created or generated onto this plane. It was not, it did not move on from there. It is like uh, you take a dough and you are preparing a chapati. So this part of the chapati is getting just elongated over here. So the first part rolled over here and rest of it is getting stretched. So in so some ways, this is a newly generated dislocation, not in some ways, but it is actually the newly generated dislocation except for the screw dislocation part, which keeps coming over here and that can get rolled onto this part. And that is why we have selected this line because the, at this particular point, the line vector and the Berger's vector, they are parallel. And therefore, this is where it can 
it has the possibility of moving to a pl uh, from plane one to plane two. If it is at some other angle, let's say if it is at this angle, then it is not in a position to move, so, meaning it does not have a pure screw character. Only when it is oriented like this, that it has a pure screw character and hence it can move on to another plane. And uh, this is very nicely shown in this schematic. So you can see this was the original dislocation <clears throat> and uh, we are assuming uh, FCC type of material. So the Burgess vector is along bar 101. So this line happens will have to be bar 101 where the dislocation moves on to another plane. And since it is bar 101, so the two possible planes are 111 and 1 bar 11, or it could have been the other way around. And now, once this dislocation reaches uh, this point, or even if you can talk about this one, this particular point has pure screw character and it can move on to another plane. And so it moves on to another plane and the rest of it gets generated. And then again, just like in the previous example, where it gets re, uh, where we get double cross slip. So here also it can get a double cross slip. And in effect, the screw dislocation is what is double cross slipping and rest of it is getting regenerated. So a couple of things that we can clearly make out from here, the line where this folding will occur or where this movement, where this transfer will, will occur, a cross slip will occur from one plane to another. The line vector for this would be the Burgess vector. It has to be because it will be the only place where line vector will be equal to Burgess vector, which means that is where you will have the screw, pure screw character. So with that in mind, we, you can look at some um, YouTube videos. And one of these YouTube videos I would like to show you over here. You can just search a Google search and you will be able to see here. So what you see here is that dislocations are moving here and then suddenly they are changing direction to over here. From here, you can clearly say that this particular line is the, this particular direction is the Burgess vector. So the Burgess vector must lie along this direction. Uh, so just by looking at this uh, image, we are in a position to define the direction of the Burgess vector. And this is done by Kasher group which have uploaded this uh, YouTube video on uh, this video on YouTube. And this is uh, in situ TM imaging, meaning inside the TM, you can take video by applying very, very minute forces. And you can see the movement of the dislocations, which is what they are able to see over here. So let me just uh, summarize what we have just gathered here. For the mixed dislocations, only screw dislocation cross slips. Rest of the component gets regenerated on the new plane. And uh, we also saw that the intersection line will be along Burgess vector because that is where it will be pure screw dislocation. And once you have the Burgess vector, you can find out what are the possible slip planes that you are seeing where the dislocations are moving. So we have now shown that mixed dislocations can also cross slip. And it is not as simple as for a cross screw dislocation because here mixed dislocation is composed of both edge and screw and only the screw dislocation actually cross slips and rest of it gets regenerated. And uh, we also found that the intersection line 
is along the budget spectrum. So we will end this cross slip uh, chapter over here and move on to another motion of the dislocation, which is climb motion. Thank you. Thank you.